Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. And then, on your husky. Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon in their relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. The Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, and the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Safe drivers seldom have emergencies, but they can happen. And how you handle yourself and your car during an emergency may be a matter of life and death. For example, what should you do if your car catches on fire? The National Safety Council says the first thing to do is turn off the ignition. Next, get everybody out of the car. And if possible, call the fire department. Use a fire extinguisher if you have one or smother the fire with whatever is available. Water, sand, dirt, or a blanket. Be sure the fire is out before you start the engine again. Better yet, don't let a fire start. Be careful with your cigarettes. Avoid excessive use of the brakes going downhill. And have the electric and fueling systems checked regularly. Fires are costly and dangerous. This message is brought to you as a public service. Benedict Yates had been a gambler and a crooked one until his various tricks with cards made him unwelcome in the Yukon settlement. While he made plans for a bigger store, he had taken over a deserted cabin several miles north of the town of Pine Crossing. Shiloh Timmons had gone with him. In his youth, Shiloh had been a tall, powerfully built man, but crippling rheumatism and old age had left him stoop-shouldered and feeble. Shiloh knew Yates' plans, and he didn't approve of them. He frowned darkly as he watched the gambler staring through the window. Well, Clark is coming back, and he has a girl with him. Ben, you can't go through with it. Good thing we spotted Sally Norris on the way to town. Oh, I never figured he'd go this far. You have a mighty squeamish conscience all of a sudden for a man who's dodging the mountains. The law doesn't want me for any crime. Well, in that case, you have no reason to be ashamed to face stress. How long are you going to throw that up to me? I just remember, I took you in when you were broke. I offered you a job at a place to steal. You with. said you needed a man who knew about gold mining. When I took the job, I didn't know you planned to steal a mine. You let me worry about getting the mine. Mm. Yes, yes, boss. Come in, selling ours. Make yourself at home. Mr. Yates, your friend Clarkson said you wanted to talk to me about my father's mine. That's right, Miss Sally. Oh, uh, this is Shallow Timmons. Shallow, he's selling ours. Hello, Hello Sally. Mr. Yates, I'm in a hurry to reach town, so please be brief. Clarkson, what was on his thread? A rifle and that package he's holding. Give the package to Clarkson. But you but heard I... me hand it over. That's better. See what's in it, Clarkson. Yeah. It's a gift to be sent to Sergeant Preston. What? He's a friend of Dan's. Sergeant Preston. Uh, look at this, boss. What is it? A gold belt buckle. So that's what you were sending to Preston, eh? Oh, uh, shallow. See if there's anything in the pocket. What? What? You might as well stand still now, Miss Sally. What did you find? Oh, just this. It's a list of things to buy in town. I'll take it. What's the idea of treating me like a prisoner? Sally, I told your father I wanted to buy his gold mine. Yes, at your price. That's right, my price. Dad has a buyer who's willing to pay what the mine is worth. That's what I heard. I figured I'd better increase my offer. Now I'm offering the same amount of cash. And you're released. Uh, you wouldn't dare. Hold oh, the clock. Oh, oh, sit down in that chair. Oh, oh Shadow, hand me that hunk of rope. Eh? You can't get away with holding me here. Here's the rope. Yeah, now. Oh. We'll just tie you so you don't make trouble, Sally. Oh. 
Shadow will stay here and keep an eye on you until we get back. Oh, uh, that'll hold it. What about this bottle for Sergeant Preston? Give it to Shadow. <laughs> It'll remind him of the way he double-crossed Preston. Thanks, I'll take that buckle. There we go, Sergeant. I'll get into my pocket and we'll go call uh, Norris. And get Shadow. Yeah? Get this. If anything happens, so this girl gets away while I'm gone. The Yukon won't be big enough to hide you. You know what I mean, and you know I mean it. Yes, I know you mean it. No matter what my father does, you'll kill me, and you know it, Ben Yates. You wouldn't dare let me leave. We'll talk about that after I've seen your dad. Come on. Oh, but... Now, now, there's no use cutting your wrist by pulling against those ropes. Don't hurt yourself. Poor Dad. He was going to sell out. Then we were going back to the state. That was why he made that buckle for Sergeant Preston. It was sort of a farewell present. Yeah, your dad will sell out all right. He'll have to sell the eight. It's a robbery. Yeah, but the way Ben has it planned, not even Sergeant Preston could prove it's illegal. You know Sergeant Preston? I know him. I expect you wonder what Ben meant when he said I, I double-crossed Preston. You probably double-crossed a lot of people. Yeah, I don't blame you for thinking that. I didn't mean to double-cross Preston. You see, he staked me. Staked you? Yep. I used to be a first-rate mining engineer. But I hit a run of bad luck. The mine I was working gave out. While I was looking for another job, I got sick. Pneumonia. My cash went for doctors and medicine and place to stay. Oh. By the time I was well, I was broke. Then I found out nobody wanted to hire an old stove-in critter like me. I was mighty discouraged. I wanted to get out of this country. Then I got a letter from a friend in the States offering me a job. Why didn't you take it? I didn't have the fare, Miss Sally. That's when I met Preston. He loaned me the cash to go back home. I promised to pay it back just as soon as I got to the stake. What happened? Somebody stole my cash. The money Sergeant Preston had given you? Yep. I didn't want to tell Preston. He just figured I was just trying to get more money from him. What did you do? In less than an hour after I'd been robbed, Yates came to me. He wanted a man who knew something about gold mining. I didn't know he planned to steal a gold mine. I didn't know he wouldn't pay me till he got to mine. I needed a job. I took it. But you didn't have to stay with me. No, I didn't have to. I could have starved. I had no cash. How far do you think a crippled fellow like me could travel before freezing to death? I, I'm sorry, Shiloh. Ben knows I owe Preston that money. He knows Preston probably figures I'm a deadbeat. He never lets me forget it. Well, I might be a deadbeat. But by golly, I've never been a crook. Shiloh, I... I guess I was wrong about you. I thought you were as bad as Ben Yates and that man he calls Clark. Nah, neither one of them any good. They both ought to be in jail. I'd sure like a chance to put him there. Maybe they will be, Shiloh. This time they've gone too far. You're right, Miss Sally. The uh, only trouble is how's the law going to catch up with him? Once your father signs over the mine, he'll have a hard time proving he was forced to sell. Well, unless... Unless what? Never mind, Shiloh. I have no right to ask you to endanger your own life for me. Well, what do you mean, Miss Sally? Oh, Abby, if I let you go, those two crooks will be arrested and I'll be in the clear. I should have thought of that. There's a knife in the drawer back here. What are you going to do? With you free, Ben will be able to force your dad to sell. What's more, you'll be able to tell the law about Ben holding you here. Your testimony might be enough to put both Yates and Crawford in jail. I'll cut those ropes. You mean you're going to let me go? Yeah, you're getting out of here. Now hold still, Miss Sally, while I cut these ropes. But Shiloh, Ben Yates, and Clark and alarm. We'll fix that. Yates was in such an almighty hurry to get out of here. He forgot his rifle. You take it. Maybe you can get the drop on them two skunks. But what about you? I'm killing two birds with one stone. You're a good friend of Sergeant Preston's. By turning you loose, I'm doing him a good turn. Sort of pay off that debt I owe him. On top of that... Maybe Yates and Clark will both go to jail. Uh, you're free now. Oh, golly. Thanks, Shiloh. Rub your wrist to restore the circulation. But what if they come back here and find me gone? They'll kill you, Shiloh. I'm counting on you to see that they don't get back. 
If you get the drop on him, your dad can tie him up and keep him till the law gets hold of him. You'll have to travel fast, Miss Sally, so you better be going. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Listen, all you fellows, girls, mothers, dads, everybody. There's something special for each one of you inside your package of Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats right now. It's a folder that offers you nationally known merchandise at savings up to 40% or more. Just use the little blue stars from Quaker cereal packages. They count like money towards such items for you fellows and girls as a Wilson Fielder's mitt, complete camera outfits, beautiful Love Me Baby doll, roller skates, tricycles. One of the items for you dads is a Remington Deluxe Shaver, regular $29.50 value, with 10 blue stars, only $18.83, a saving of over $10. And you ladies can save $40 on a 17-jewel Benrus watch. Just buy Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats, either quick or old-fashioned, round or square package. The folder inside gives you full details. Hurry, save up to 40% or more on valuable and useful merchandise. Get Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats today. Now to continue. Sally Norris started north toward her father's cabin. She traveled rapidly for a time. Then unconsciously, she began to slow down. The wind's dying down. Maybe it'll be easier walking now. Sally didn't know it, but the ominous quiet was the calm before the storm. Suddenly, oh! a roaring blizzard struck with stunning force. The blizzard? Oh, I have to go faster. Oh, that wind... The wind drove particles of ice and snow like stinging needles to strike whatever lay in its path. Sally had her back to the blizzard. It was even worse for two men, a sled, a dog team, and the wonder dog Yukon King traveling in the opposite direction. The mighty king was blazing a trail into the very heart of the fierce storm for Sergeant Preston, a man named Johnson, who was traveling with the Mounties. Hey, Hussey! Hey, Hussey! Hey, hey. hey, stop here, Johnson. I can hardly see a thing, Sergeant Preston. Where are we? There's a cave just ahead. I'll wait there till the storm lets up. Inside the cave, Preston unharnessed his dogs, broke out provisions, and fed the team. Then the Mountie and his companion prepared to wait out the blizzard. Well, I never expected to find shelter tonight, Sergeant. I wanted to cover as much ground as possible, but there's no use pushing on against a storm like this. We're well, doggone lucky you knew about this cave. I don't see how anyone could survive this blizzard. Sergeant, what's that? A wolf, but don't worry about it, Johnson. They won't bother us while kings are on. <laughs> That's it, fella. You settle down between us. Sally Norris had found no shelter from the storm. Darkness, as well as the blizzard, had overtaken her. So, so hard to walk. I won't. It sounds like a whole lot of them. Lifting her rifle, the panic-stricken girl tried to run, but the effort of fighting the blizzard had exhausted her strength. She stumbled and fell. <laughs> Terrified and confused, Sally lost all sense of direction. She began traveling in circles, while a hungry wolf pack closed in for In the snug cave where Sergeant Preston and the man named Johnson waited for the blizzard to subside, the great dog king raised his head. <laughs> King heard the howls of a wolf pack. He listened. And then suddenly, the great dog understood the shrill cries. King tensed. Then sounded an alarm. What is it, King? What's the matter, Sergeant? Easy, King. Is something wrong? King thinks so. He heard something outside. I'll look and see. Is it still snowing? Oh, the snow stopped. I hear wolves, but nothing else. What it, boy. I want to listen. For an instant, King stopped breathing. He knew from the shrill pitch of the pack's cry that the wolves were out for blood. Hey, hey! Hey! Sergeant Preston, your dog! A wolf fight! King's on the meat! Hey! Hey! Streaking past the sled and sleeping dog team, King raced through the snow toward the prowling, lurking creatures he knew as enemies. He saw the gleaming eyes of the wolves as they were about to close in on a dark form that lay on the ground at the base of a steep cliff. Hey, hey! King barked a challenge as he placed himself between the wolves and the still form in the snow. Their leader leaped at the door. In 
deference to their leader, the pack stood back as the battle began. Kane saw hatred in the flashing eyes and the threat of death and cruel fangs that tried to grip a vital spot beneath his heavy fur. The mighty husky dodged and lunged. He used every trick he knew. King leaped at the leader. He dashed out with his powerful teeth. And then spun quickly to attack again. He fought desperately, knowing that the pack might close in at any moment. Then suddenly... Hold your fire, Johnson. He's fighting a wolf pack. Can't tell the dog from the wolf. Hey, this way, boy. Get going, King. His fur bristling, King moved back a pace, still protecting the still form behind him. King's broken away. Let him have it, Johnson. Imagine Preston, why in the world would King want to tangle with a wolf pack? Yes, King, I understand, boy. There's the answer, Johnson. Great Scott, someone lying in the snow. King watched as his master lifted the parka-clad form lying face down in the snow. This is Sally Norris. Is she alive? She's breathing, not wounded. Must have been caught in a storm. And traveling on foot, too. Yes. I'll carry you to the cave. Johnson, bring a rifle. All right. King, if this girl lives, she'll owe her life to you. If you can just swallow a little warm broth. Sally, try to swallow. She's coming too. Sally. What did she say? She's lost consciousness again. She mentioned her name. Yes, she mentioned Ben Yates. Who's he? Gambler. Been run out of several times. Curious this girl should mention his name. Yes, it is. Well, I'll take her home. See if you can get her to drink some of this while I harness the dog. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Have you been wishing you could actually see Sergeant Preston in action? See him riding his big black horse, Rex, capturing lawbreakers with the help of his courageous dog, Yukon King? And when winter comes, would you like to actually see the terrifying avalanches and snow slides in the coldest country of the North? Actually see a pack of huskies pulling a dog sled over endless snowdrifts? Well, listen to this. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon goes on television next week. These exciting news stories of courage, bravery, romance, mystery will fascinate men, women, boys, and girls. And will be brought to you on a coast-to-coast TV network starting next Thursday, September 29th by all the Quaker cereals. Quaker puff wheat and rice, Quaker oats and mother's oats, Muffet shredded wheat, and Quaker Paco 10. Now, did you get that date? Write it down. It's next Thursday evening, September 29th, the premiere of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon on television. It's something new and different in television for the whole family. Check your newspaper for the time and the station nearest you. Now to continue. The blizzard that had forced Sergeant Preston to seek shelter had also stopped Jed Norris. The old man had stayed at his mine until the storm subsided. As he made his way toward his cabin, breaking a trail through the newly fallen snow, Jed didn't know that Ben Yates and Speed Clawson were waiting for him in his home. Throw more wood on the fire, will you, Speed? Sure, boss. Boss, you think it was safe to leave the girl with Shadow? We're mad think so much of Preston, he might get soft-hearted and let her go. He knew this wouldn't happen to him, if he does. <laughs> Old Shadow would be downright mad. He knew we were the ones who hit him over the head and stole the cash Preston gave him. As long as he doesn't know, he'll do what I tell him. If he gets hard to handle, I'll get rid of him. So he can run to the Marty's and talk? I'll take care of that. A lot of accidents can happen to a man in this country. So here comes no about time. Sally! Sally, where are you? That is Jed. Yes. What are you doing here? We've been waiting for you. You ain't no my friend, Speak Clarkson. You came here to sit out the storm. The worst is over now. Get going. Sally! No use calling Sally, Jed. She's not here. Where is she? Take a look at this. That's Sally's rifle. She had the rifle and this list of things with her when Speed uh, met her on the trail. You recognize this handwriting, Jed? How'd you get this paper? Where's my daughter? She's all right. She hasn't been hurt. Not yet, anyway. You, you've made her a prisoner. Right. Now we'll talk business. Yet you wanted to sell out so you and Sally could get back to the stage. 
I told you I'd buy the mine. And I told you I wouldn't sell at your price. I offered you $5,000 cash. Now I offer the same amount plus Sally's life. What? This mine is worth $75,000. I'll pay five. We'll draw up the bill of sale, then you pack your gear and clear out. You'll meet Sally on the way to Dawson. Just keep traveling till you reach the state. Dirty yellow back tin horn. The papers are right here. Steve will sign his name as witness. That'll make it legal. You sign here. You weasel faced crook. You should have been run out of this country. Never mind the comments. Do you sign it, don't you? How do I know you'll keep your part of the bargain? How do I know Sally's not dead right now? You can take my word for it. Your word. She's alive. Now sign the bill of sale, Jed, and Steve will go back to. Where? To where Sally's waiting. We'll turn her loose. Put her on a sled, and she'll meet you on the trail to Dawson, just as I said. I don't believe you. You know you'll not get away with this if you let her go free. If we tell the law, That's all I want is a gold mine. Sign the bill of sale so everything's legal, then give me your word you'll clear out without going to the law. And I'll keep my part of the bargain. I don't want to kill Sally, but if you don't sign, I'll uh, have to. The fact is... I'll have to kill both of you. Well, if you bring Sally here, let me see that she's alive. Sally, Jed, you heard the proposition. I, uh, have to think it over. I want to close the deal now, my way, Norris. Are you going to sign? Uh, all right. I'll sign. Sign. Hand me the pen. I'll get it. You're showing good sense, Jed. Here's the pen. Now, Jed, just sign your name on this line. All right. Uh, that's it, Jed. You lied about Sally being alive. He's I'll... alive. Now, Steve, you sign. Boss, come and come and. Who is it? It's a Monty. A Monty? Preston. Hey, give me that bill of sale. You don't have to snatch Boris, it. Boris, if you want to see Sally again, get rid of Preston. We'll go into the next room, but we'll listen to every word. Come on, Preston. Be careful, Jed. Remember, we'll be listening. Uh, how will I get rid of him? Hello, Ben. Oh, hello, Sergeant Preston. Mind if I come in? Well, I'm mighty busy right now. Oh, hey! In spite of Jed's unwillingness to let his friends enter, Preston and King stepped into the cabin. Instantly, the great dog King caught the scent of Jed Norris's fear. He knew, too, that two men were in the next room and that they were enemies. Quiet, King. I understand, boy. Anyone here, Jen? Why, no, nobody here. Where's Sally? Well, she's not here. She, she went to town this morning and decided to stay there for the night. Oh. As if planning to warm his hands at the glowing fire in the hearth, Sergeant Preston crossed the room. King was at his master's heels. Distracted as he was, Jed saw nothing suspicious in the Mounties' casual manner. He didn't notice the grim purpose in Preston's stride. Suddenly, Preston turned sharply. He reached for the door at one side of the fireplace. Get him, King! Oh, 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 no, you don't. No, you don't. Let him up, Let him up. What's the idea of jumping it? Hitting my partner and knocking him out. Don't reach for your gun. No, I don't need a gun. You, you've made a mistake. There's no mistake. Jed, disarm this man. No. What? You're covered, Sergeant Preston. Oh. Knock your gun. No, Jed. But you put your gun away before King jumps you. Jed, you know what's at stake? Keep him covered. Uh, I'm sorry, Sergeant. But you have no reason to come in here. I have yes. reason to arrest these men. Speed Clawson's been wanted for a long time. And as for Yates... No, no. Steady, King. Watch him, boy. Lower your gun, Jed. You don't understand. I can't. Oh, she can't. Jed, if you're thinking of Sally, she's safe. What? She told me Yates and Clawson were here. Listen, you're crazy. She's on my sled. The man who came here to buy your mine will be along with Sally any minute. Hey, he's lying. It's a trick. Hear those dogs outside? You're finished, Yates. Sally, you're safe. Dad, did Yates hurt you? No, no, honey. He didn't hurt me, but he had me mighty scared. How'd, how'd you get free? Shiloh cut the rope. He it, let me go. Shiloh, that dirty double-crosser. He didn't double-cross you. He never was one of your kind. I'll deal with him. Then you and your pal will be out of circulation too long to deal with anyone. Sally, you say a man named Shiloh let you go? Yes, that's right, Dad. He saved my life and maybe yours, too. I never heard of him. Sergeant Preston knows him. Why, yes, I remember Shiloh. I thought he'd gone back to the States. He couldn't, Sergeant Preston. Someone stole the money you loaned him. Oh. He threw in with Ben Yates only so he could earn enough to stay alive. Sounds like the poor critters had hard luck. But we'll change that, Sally. We'll see the Shiloh's reward. Then there's a reward for the capture of Speed Clawson. I'll see that Shiloh gets it. 
Should be enough to take him back to the States if he wants to go. Oh, he does, Sergeant. He can go home with Dad and me. We'll go home together. Well, Sergeant Press, I see you've got your men. Yes, Johnson. Come in and close your deal with Norris. With Sally safe and these two cooks under arrest, this case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here's a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. When you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your Mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for Mutual's famous programs, especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. Summer had come to the Yukon. Two crooks held up the Selkirk Bank and thought they'd covered every angle of their escape. But Sergeant Preston and Yukon King managed to pick up their trail, which finally led to a fishing trawler on the river. Preston, the constable, and King tried to swim out and get aboard the moving vessel. We must get aboard. It isn't impossible. They see us first. We're finished. Oh, don't do that. Try again. Come on. The crooks aboard are armed and desperate. Can Sergeant Preston, the constable, and King get aboard before the crooks spot them and take their lives as they struggle in the water? Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.